I'm also very friendly, and don't, don't be afraid to talk to me either. <laughs> My name is Mary Sue Schottenfels, and I'm the executive director of a nonprofit in the city that works on, guess what, lead. We also work on other pressing health issues, as Dr. Elsie talked about. Asthma is a huge problem in Detroit, as well as all sorts of unhealthiness around our, um, our population and our housing, especially. But today we're here to talk about lead, and I'm going to follow up on Doug and give you a little more information on Lead 101, and then I'm also going to talk to you about what resources are available. Because the good news is there are some solutions. And the first thing I want to say is I want to shout out to several partners here who are working together as a community to do something about it. First, the health department under Dr. Elsaid's leadership has turned this thing on its head in terms of a real intentionality to do something about lead for the first time in quite a while in the city of Detroit. And I think he is uh, using the bully pulpit and also being very creative about strategies and solutions. So kudos to the health department for taking leadership. Also, we've got um, GDAC here, Greater Detroit Area Health Council, that's starting a lead initiative. We've got, um, who else is on my list? Um, oh, Rebecca Munich, Munich from the Ecology Center that does wonderful work on toy testing and water and has written a, an excellent report court called, the, um, what, what is your report called? And so she's proven with, with people on her staff the cost of lead. And it's ex an extraordinary cost if we do nothing. It's the cost of doing nothing is uh, way more expensive than the cost of doing prevention and front end work. So that it's an excellent report and you can find it on their website, I'm sure. Um, and then um, uh, SDEV is here, uh, Southwest Detroit Environmental Vision. They, they're doing a lot of good work on that as well. So what can you do? What can we do? And especially what can you do? The first thing you can do is become knowledgeable about lead. Um, lead is something that we understand completely. There's other diseases we're still trying to figure out and figure out what to do. But guess what? On lead, we know exactly what to do. We know where lead comes from. We know more and more about it, it impacts the body. And we know how to remove it from the environment. So the first thing we want you to take out of here today is and understanding that um, we, can, we can solve this problem. We've had uh, many times that the federal government has set a goal for eliminating lead, and then they move that goal and move that goal. But I do believe in the city of Detroit, we literally can eliminate lead as a problem for our children. Dr. Elsie talked about the 9%, that's almost 10% of our children are lead poisoned. In zip code 48214, 17% of the children that have been tested are lead poisoned. And as he said, We've never really tested enough of the kids. We've still got lots and lots of kids that are not tested. So spread the word about lead. Tell people it's still a problem. It's still a problem in the city of Detroit. It's still a problem in urban centers all over the state, including Flint, obviously. And tell people that the number one way that children get poisoned in our city and in most cities is from lead in paint and lead in old houses. So just a couple points on that. Any house built before 1978 po possibly has lead. Any house built before 1950 does have lead, unless that house has had completely been renovated with new windows and a new siding, et cetera. So the number one way children get poisoned in the city of Detroit is leaded windows. So we really encourage people to think about that when they're doing rehab. Also, to tell you that when people are doing rehab and having the best of intentions, to help their family, they often poison their children in the process. There are things people can do to do their own renovations lead safe, and our organization, and we have literature on every table, can guide you through the process of doing work on your own house or guiding your contractor uh, to do work uh, in the way that will make everybody lead safe. So with that, I'd like to say that there are some real resources around now. For the first time, we've got some serious resources available. Number one is the city of Detroit and the state of Michigan have lead grants. These are grants that you as a homeowner, if you have a child under six living in your home, can access. And that can be a rental property owner or an owner occupant. These grants offer, uh, our grants offer up to about $15,000. The cities offer up to $25,000 to help um, remediate the lead hazards in the home. And usually for that much, we can get rid of the lead hazards. It doesn't mean we're going to get rid of every 
bit of lead. Like a, if a wall here it has lead paint, but it's not deteriorating, chipping, peeling, we're going to leave that wall alone. But any friction or um, impact surface, like a window going up and down, a door opening and shutting, stairs that you're banging on, that will continue to generate lead dust if it's leaded. So these are the kind of areas we address. So both of these programs um, have a, a small waiting list, but both are expanding our program out of ClearCore Detroit, and we're, we manage the state's lead program is expanding exponentially. So we want to encourage you. There's applications on the table. I have two staff over here, Dieta and Tanisha, and they can answer any questions you have about the grant program. So uh, our grant program and then the city of Detroit's grant program. The other thing you need to know is that by law in the city of Detroit, rental property owners must make their properties lead safe. Now I have to say that only about 10% are complying at this point, but working with the health department and the uh, building department, and actually now the feds a little bit, we are really uh, taking on these landlords. In fact, there's the lead article in Cranes uh, Detroit this week was about a landlord that owns $1 million in blight tickets around the issue of not having um, a lead clearance for his rental properties. He owns 10 companies, the blight collection system out of the city of Detroit is fairly weak at this point. So he's been ignoring fines. He probably owns, you know, four or 500 houses. None of them are lead safe and they're all being rented to our friends and neighbors. So you need to know that anybody that you know that's renting a house, they can ask, is there a lead clearance on this house? Is this house registered with the city? And generally the answer is no. And that's, uh, that's a way of empowering the community to ask those questions. Um, we're doing a really good job now of starting to try to rev up what we can do, but we're still a long way from having every property lead safe. If we could get every rental, there's about 100,000 of them taken care of by the people that own them, we'd be a long way towards solving this problem. Classically, more children um, in rental properties are lead poisoned than an owner occupied, but there's plenty of both. So, and then the other thing to know is that there's a state law as well. So if we find a property that has uh, a lead poisoned child, we get into that property, we do an inspection, we see that there's lead, we serve the owner with a notice, a 90 day notice. If they just ignore that notice, they actually can be criminally prosecuted by the Wayne County prosecutor. That's a new statewide law and we're trying to get other counties to use it, but we have it here and we can use that. So. There really are a lot of solutions from educating yourself, making sure you do any work in your home, let's say, and then making sure that you tell friends and neighbors to number one, get their kids tested if they're under six, to inform themselves about lead in the paint. Um, there are some issues with lead and water and I'm really glad that these vouchers are here if you want to get your water tested. Classically in Detroit, um, water is not a huge issue. We hope that when we start testing more, we'll find out that that hasn't changed. But generally, we, we really are worried about uh, lead and paint in homes. So with that, I think I'll stop and then we'll take questions. Thank you.